Hello, my name is Lincoln and I'm Walter. Yeah, and this is the Two Peas in a Pod book club podcast thing. Uh, I still don't understand what this is, but you know. Book discussion group? You know, book club. Two, it, it, that's why we named it the Two Peas Book Club, because there's just two of us <laughs> just hanging out in a book. <laughs> but in this episode, we are discussing Escaping Exodus by Nikki Drayden. Um, yeah, this book is very weird. Very, very weird. Uh, I'm still not 100% sure about what it is, but in this episode, we try to dissect what it is. <laughs> we mainly talk about a lot of like the funny things we read because a lot of this book is just like, what just happened type of stuff. And yeah, this, this, this discussion is basically me trying to figure out <laughs> what I read. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? No, I'm set. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get into it. Before we get into talking about this book, what are you currently reading? Um, well, the the shtick that I've been on uh, has been, I, I don't know why, but I just like, I started reading uh, rom-coms. Uh -huh. I read, um, oh no, I've already lost their names. The Unhoneymooners yeah. by somebody that I never... Christina Lauren. Thank you. I never read the, the author's name. Um, that's, and then That's actually a writing duo. Two people wrote that. Oh, Chris, oh really? Well, they did a good job. I didn't notice. Um, <laughs> and then I read... Uh, you read Waiting for Tom Hanks. Yes, that one. Right, Waiting for Tom Hanks, which is about a girl who is waiting for her Tom Hanks. Not specifically Tom Hanks himself. Um, Waiting for Tom Hanks, I rated like a three star. It was okay, but the theme of the book was a girl who was infatuated with rom-coms. So the entire time, this book was literally comparing itself to every other rom-com in existence. Um, Did you know all the references? No. I knew most of them. Um, I used to watch a lot of rom-coms. That was my guilty pleasure in college. Uh, I, would, I would secretly watch rom-coms. That's nothing to be ashamed of. It was when I thought I needed that wasn't manly. Mm. Um, but I understand now that men are allowed to have sensitive sides. Um, anyway, so I got most of the references, but it also, I guess, it was, it just felt very cliche. And since it was comparing itself to other rom coms, it didn't stand up to the other rom coms as well. If I wasn't thinking about other rom coms, it would have been fine. The mm -hmm. yeah, Unhoneymooners was great, though. That was a four star book in my mind. Um, what did you read? You read that book too, didn't you? Yeah. What did you read it? I gave it five stars. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was good. It was a good book. Yeah. Um, and then I've just been reading, like, uh, yeah, financial books and uh, <laughs> leadership and team building books and, uh, like, relationship building books in a leadership or business setting, mm -hmm. et, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, like, I'm, I'm, I listen to three books on Friday. Um, I have it at three times speed now on Libby. I just I have it turned up all the way, and I'm just cranking through them because uh, I just I don't know two two speed two times speed. It feels slow now, um, so I've been hauling through them, which at this point means I'm only I'm not absorbing a lot, but I'm absorbing like the main points, um, yeah. which is apparently what super successful like CEOs and stuff. They apparently read twelve books a day, or not a day, but a week, and they just skim really hardcore and pick up the main themes but so. you're you're are you doing the three times speed with the fiction books you're reading no no i listen to those on two times speed okay but since all but see that that makes sense like yeah, yeah, yeah. the the non-fiction books you're really only gonna remember mm -hmm. the key points yeah and they all seem the same thing just in slightly different ways and sometimes they add something new um so there's no point in spending a lot of time on them so mm -hmm. anyways that's what I've been reading. I haven't read any fantasy or sci-fi recently. Mm -hmm. Just waiting on uh, Brandon Sanderson has been releasing daily updates on his. He's finishing the fourth book in his Stormlight Archive, um, mm -hmm. of the very last edit, uh, and he's been giving daily updates on word count of how far he has to go. And I think he might be done with it by now. I haven't seen one in a couple days, but just waiting for that to drop. <laughs> so excited! 
So, what about you? What have you been reading? Well, uh, today I've been reading uh, Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. Or that kid- a name. Kindred or Kindred? I, I don't know. But it's about a woman who like time travels kind of, Uh except for she can't control it. She uh, goes back in time to meet this boy (laughs) and she saves him from drowning. And that's the first time she goes back. And it's back in like the 1800s in America. So like, uh, and she goes back and saves him. And then the only way she can like come back is Uh like if she's in danger. So when the boy's in danger, she goes to him. And when she's in danger, she goes back to 1970s. Weird. Where she, like, present day for her. And, um, and so sometimes she'll get stuck in the 1800s. And, Until she finds it dangerous. Yeah, and she's black. So mm. she's presumed to, to be a slave. And Not a good setup. she is treated like a slave uh-huh. and all this stuff. And... Yeah. I feel like that's dangerous, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's it, Like, I feel like that would be enough to be dangerous. It's, a, it's a very uh, tough book at mm. times. Like, there's been a couple scenes where I'm like, I don't want to listen yeah. to this. Brutally honest. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, it's been really good, and I'm almost done with it. And then I've also been reading, uh, what's it called? It's a novella by Gail Carriger. Mm. It's uh, Romancing the Inventor. Well, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. And it's about... Uh, Lady... Ma- Madame... Madame LeFou. She's the inventor. And mm-hmm. this uh, parlor maid. It's about, like, their love story. <laughs> and so I'm, I have... I'm, like, maybe ten pages into the novella. Yeah. So it's not, it's not long, but I'm also not that far into it. So I don't really know. Mm. What's going on? That sounds good. But yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. You want to talk about the book? Yeah. Let's talk we about have it. it right here because it's beautiful. Isn't it a, such a beautiful cover, though? So, so vibrant. This cover, like, when I chose to put it on the list, I did not know anything about it. Yeah. And even when you looked at it, you didn't know anything about it. But because it was such a beautiful cover, we were both like, yes, I don't know if this is we're gonna... reading that. Oh, no. I don't know if this is going to, if this is, uh, yeah, look, okay. Look at that. Thing. Got the vibrancy. And like yeah. her face, ready, bam. Wow. You got to talk louder. Such good colors and art. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Five star cover. Oh Easily. yeah! Like e- despite what we think of this book, it's gonna be on our shelf, and it's like it's the type of book where you you don't put its spine out, you're gonna put it face out. Oh yeah! This deserves to be seen. Mm-hmm. You know, like I would have like a poster of this. Oh yeah! And just like hang it Ooh, up. Ooh, I wonder if we can do that. Mm-hmm. She like the, that's beautiful. This art may be on a poster. Like maybe Nikki Drayden on her website, she has a poster Let's of this. Try to find that. Yeah. When we're rich and famous, we can just decorate our house with this person's art. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. So, so we picked this book up. The only thing I knew about it was it was LGBTQ+, and it was sci-fi, which sci-fi isn't a genre that I read. <laughs> like, I think the only sci-fi books I've read are, like, The Martian. That's where the guy is stuck oh, on Mars. Oh, um, Matt Damon. Yeah. In the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And I like half, really that. half the book is just him talking about potatoes. <laughs> so it's not that sci-fi. Is he the only guy on Mars? Mm-hmm. Why would you do, like, why would you send just one dude no, on you, Mars? No, you, okay, this isn't about the Martian, <laughs> but they didn't. They were trying to evacuate, and there was a storm, and he got knocked out, and they left Oh, he got him. trapped there. Yeah. Oh, uh, see, I thought, like... They just sent him up. No, there. no, no. Like, there, surely. There was a group of people, <laughs> God. but he got knocked out and they thought he had died. Okay. And so they just left. I might need to read that. Yeah. I Some mean, potato I, well, I would definitely do that as an audiobook because half the book is him talking about how he's surviving on potatoes. Yeah. But, so I don't know how interesting it would be, be to read it physically, but audiobook, it was, it was a good book. It sounds nice. So, like, that's, that's what I, like, my thing of, like, 
sci-fi. Like, I've never been into mm-hmm. Star Wars or Star Trek or any of those things. But, you know, this cover, I was like, maybe I'll enjoy it. I enjoyed the cover. <laughs> <laughs> so, I and, and plus I was like, well, Walter, he reads fantasy and sci-fi. So, this will be a good pick for him to where he's not just reading a bunch of books that I love, you know? I appreciate that. Yeah. I yeah. was trying. So I'm, I'm going to give a small synopsis, synopsis of this book real quick. Um, uh, with as few spoilers as possible. So yeah, hopefully no spoilers. Well, we're going to get into spoilers. Well, I mean, At yeah. At this point, okay. Zero spoilers for those of you who are looking for a unspoiler, unspoiler. Eve, uh, uh, review of the book um and then we'll get into spoils later so we'll give you a cutoff point um of when you should leave if you don't want spoilers this book is about a young woman named seske um and she is of a uh, the noble class within the society and the society is um people who have left earth and they were on spaceships Mm -hmm. Um, mining? I believe they were miners. They were just living out in in spaceships. It was never explained. Um, and then, uh, they couldn't survive on their spaceships anymore. They were living, I think, I think it was explained that they were living on their ships, basically shepherds of... No, they were, they were trying to find a planet. Were they? Yeah. Never got that. that I'm pretty sure they were trying to find a planet, but it was too far away. Yeah. And so, and they couldn't live on the ship forever. Mm-hmm. And so that's when they found... These beasts. These beasts. Now, these beasts are gargantuan. Um, like, thousands and thousands of people live in, in this book, in, in this time period, inside the beast. And mm-hmm. it's like a symbiotic relationship. Um, and Well, so at first, the people just harvested what they, they got their food from the beast. Like, they didn't kill them. Um, at first they just went inside, um, and like there were swamps and plants and other animals living inside these beasts in, in the middle of space, floating through space. And these, these beasts ate stardust and they were airtight at all times, even when you poked holes in them. Um, anyways, so they, so they got, they lived off the beasts and then their population grew to the point where they, they moved inside the beasts. Mm-hmm. And they had, like, populations of thousands of people inside these things. Um, they had farms and cities and stuff, towns inside of this, uh, of these animals. Um, so it's about this girl named Seske and her friend named Adala. Um, it's dual POV. Yeah. So it goes, like, dual. each chapter goes back and forth. Uh-huh. Like, the first chapter is, like, Seske, the next chapter is Adala. Yeah. So. so. Um, Seske is in line for the throne. And it's a matriarchal society, so the queen is matris. Um, and it's about Seske and Adala's journey of uh, dealing with their beast who is troublesome um, and is dying or fighting back to a degree. Um, and they have to figure out how to survive within this animal um, and save their colony of people within it. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the non-spoilery... Uh, Synopsis. Do you want to add anything? Did I miss anything big? No. I, th- no. I think that's pretty much it. Oh, oh, a big thing. That's not spoilery. Um, so, and it's just like a cool thing. For a form of population control, their family pods mm-hmm. were two men? Three men? It was, it was two th- or three men. I think it was three men and seven women. All were parents together. And then they were only, in that pile of adults, they were only allowed to have one child. So the three men were married to the seven women, all communally together. Yeah. And then whoever, whatever woman had the first child, they got to keep it. And any other... Well, it was, there was like a womb mother. Womb mother. There was a womb mother, a will mother, a heart mother, and like... Yeah, that's right. Something, so like each of them had like a role. Got it. So like the womb mother would have the kid. Yeah. So, Seske, uh, she was born by the womb mother, mm-hmm. and her, uh, 
Matris mother? Her the lead the head lead mother, head think. mother was Matris the Queen, right? Matris the Queen was it her that was got pregnant? Yeah, she was. She also. got pregnant at the before the womb mother did. And by law, she was apparently allowed to keep it if she had it first. But Seske was a premature baby. She came out first. Matris didn't kill off her child like she was supposed to. She just bent the rules because she was the queen, which is, that's perfectly fine. It's whatever. So that's a, that's a story arc as well. Anyways, that was just a very interesting. Yeah. Uh, and also story. in this society, like, what, well, that'll, we'll get that'll, yeah, that'll yeah, be yeah. something we get into. That's your synopsis. Synopsis. Yeah. So did you like this book and what did you rate it? I rated it two stars. It was, it was alien. To a mm -hmm. high degree, mm -hmm. um, not the best writing. It was like it was it was okay writing, like. I think it was good writing. It's just at least for me. Yeah. It was way too high, and like. High sam high fantasy. High, high like yeah, it was way too high and like. Out there for yeah. me to like, grasp it, but like I think. If you're into, like, what's all in this book, I think you yeah. would enjoy the writing. Yeah. Um, one thing also is some people, and I would agree, is they define it as... Body horror. Body horror. Yeah. Um, because they live in this beast, and, Ugh. like, they live inside of it. And there's all this stuff about blood and mucus and slime, and uh, it's a lot of cutting through meat and... Um, and, like... At one point, like after, <laughs> after this one scene happened, uh, I I was like, "What in the world are we reading?" So I looked up reviews, and that's when I saw that people were talking about like this being body heart, and I was like, "Okay, if that's what this is, like I don't think I enjoy this because it was talking about how they were squeezing through the beast's uh, butthole, second butthole, or was it third? I think they went through both. There was so there were three. Three anis, anuses, anuses, right? Ani, anuses. <laughs> quit saying that word. There are three buttholes. Chained. Stop. Butthole, tube, Stop. butthole, tube, butthole space. Yeah? And for some reason, this beast, who is large enough to have thousands of people live inside it, has a butthole small enough. Well, first off, the third butthole is airtight. Um, which, I mean, I guess... Our buttholes are airtight because, like, you have the sort of you, you, you two, it's like two still just fall out. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, oh my but like, they have to pry open the buttholes to squeeze through it. It's body horror, you know. Yeah. And, and it, it talks just, about like sludge on the ground. Well, I mean, that wasn't the body horror. It was just it would. Well, that's it the, would, the butthole horror. Yeah, it would just <laughs> it would just describe body parts. Yeah, and like. Things interacting with the bot, like their bodies and stuff, in just a way that it was like, okay, why why'd you have to go yeah. that far? So if you are, uh, or if you enjoy gory things and just like super uncomfortable, no shame to you. That's cool beans. If you enjoy that type of stuff and you don't want to read about serial killers chopping people up, maybe you want to do that too. That's perfectly fine. This is a book that doesn't include serial killers chopping people up, but it does include Body extreme detailed mm -hmm. descriptions of gross, slimy, chopped up bits and pieces. Yeah. It's also Body very parts. weird. Like, I saw a lot of reviews talking about how this is, like, an out there oh, yeah. weird book. Uh -huh. So, like, it's not just, like, me as, like, a non-sci-fi reader just not getting it, but, like... Even in like the sci-fi genre, and like yeah. people who enjoyed it would say said it's a weird book. Mm -hmm. So if you like those like weird like non-conventional, yeah, like never really like I I've never read anything like yeah. this. So. And that's probably why I gave it two stars. Is that it is it is alien compared to anything else I've read. And I've read a lot of sci-fi. I've read mm -hmm. a lot of sci-fi, and this is like nothing I've ever read. Um, and that's not, that's not bad or anything, but it was also part of the reason I gave it two stars is that despite the fact that it is alien to everything, mm -hmm. the author 
wrote it in such a way where you just sort of had to figure it out as you go along. And I mean, to some degree, I appreciate that if it wasn't so alien. Like in normal fantasies, if there's like a magic system and stuff, love figuring all those out for myself because I'm used to figuring out magic systems. But in a society this alien, 10 parents, one child, um, living inside of a space animal that doesn't need to breathe, um, who is it harvesting it and uh the society of like the the matriarchal society and um all like just a lot of stuff that i you could never guess that. yeah you would just never assume that and it's never told to you either just it, it passes by and if you don't catch it you don't catch it and it was just i don't know alien to me so yeah that's why i rated the two stars um but did you enjoy it like did you enjoy reading this book look like the Art, the overarching story was good. I thought I thought it had a fine storyline, mm -hmm. um, and if it was if it was that storyline applied to something that wasn't so strange to me, I probably would have given it three or four stars. Mm -hmm. um, it was just the specific topics, the alienness. I'm gonna say that word a lot tonight. It was just strange. So yeah. Okay. Well, I I enjoyed myself with reading this book. But not in, like, the sense of, like, I knew what was going on. <laughs> like, I felt like in this book, I was the, uh, the very ditzy friend that's just kind of there and will, like, laugh along but doesn't actually get the jokes. <laughs> like, I felt like that was me. So I was enjoying the ride, but I still have no clue what I read. So I decided not to rate it. At all? Yeah. Interesting. Because, like, I have no clue. <laughs> just none at all. Yeah. Because, like... Is that a zero star, or...? I mean, on Goodreads, I just didn't rate it. So, like, yeah, I, it would, like, if you looked at, like, all my books that mm -hmm. I had, it would say, it would say like, a zero star. But, like, I'm not... It's not a zero star book. Yeah. I just have no... Like, with my... You can't compute love. Yeah, I... Well, like, it, it doesn't be. register in my brain and, like, how I rate the books. Like, it doesn't necessarily fit into any of those categories and yeah. so i'm just like instead of just shoving it like because i would probably just like shove it in the three star book because like i enjoyed it like i read it like i didn't hate it like just go there but like it doesn't fit mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah so like we were reading this book physically and we would like read pages to each other aloud but like at page you took my bookmark out, so oh, I... Oh, no. I just thought it was in there from the last time. I'm so sorry. I it it was the end. No, it was in the front. Because it was the last part that we had actually read aloud. Oh, no. Um, I'm sorry. I think it was at part two, when part two began, which was on, like, at the 100 page mark. At that point, that's when we were like... <laughs> <laughs> we we don't know what this is so that we did end up listening to this on audiobook and i enjoyed the narrator yeah, yeah the narrator was good um mm -hmm. they did a good job yeah okay so before we get into anything else i guess that's like if if you were listening to this and you're like haven't read this book and you don't want to be spoiled for what's going on like i guess this is the end for you but if you do read this book, definitely come back and so you can hear all our thoughts and maybe say your thoughts as well. But now it's definitely going to be spoilery. I did not make a, uh, what's it called? A timeline for this thing, for like what we need to talk about because, yeah, it's so jumbled. But I did... Whenever we were first reading it, I started, like, dog-earing pages, like, that had, like, what in the world was this line? Do you want to read these? Uh, yeah, if you can find them, yeah. I got a couple of them. I know that you have ripened, and you are ready for womanhood. I have sent word ahead, I've, I've sent word of this ahead to your matrix as well. Way it bends down on one knee, wipes his gloved index finger upon the floor, then turns it up so that I can see a small dollop of blood stains the tip of his glove. The undeniable smirk of mince envy sits upon his lips. So, 
And, and then it talks about later how she was in a stasis pod, like with her family. So the, this book starts out with them going and getting a new beast. So like all the people are in their stasis pods while the workers work and like build their town up again, mm -hmm. basically. And she like sneaks out of her stasis pod. And then apparently she's naked and she has gotten her period for the first time. And this boy walks up and like wipes it up off the ground and is like, you're a woman now. And then it talks about how she was like, oh yeah, I guess that's why the like the, the air in her family. No, unit. it was like it's like liquidy. It's like a liquid. Were, are the stasis pods liquidy? Yeah. Oh. It was like like she was like oh that's why the, like the liquid that we were floating in in the stasis pod like tasted of like like coppery and stuff. But, so like her whole family is just floating around in her menstrual blood. <laughs> <laughs> and it pointed it out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, here's another one. My heart weeps, thinking about the little bowel-swabbing children her family unit would share. It's talking about how, like, the lowest of the low live in the buttholes. Yeah. And <laughs> the little bowel-swabbing children. <laughs> my lips purse. I dare not sass my mother back, but I want to betcha. Comparing me with our lady, Baxi Batsy, 200 years her bones have been drifting through space, given a charlatan's burial for consorting with matrices. Matris Borgal's daughter shot straight through the beast's anal sphincter with all that thrice recycled sludge. Which is just a right, which is just a polite way of saying third ass craps. Yeah, you didn't have to read all that. It was just the, the third ass craps. Oh, I was talking about the anal sphincter shooting. No. That one was funny. And then there's a whole scene about a man pooping in public, <laughs> which they there's no privacy. Yeah, there's no there's no privacy in like the lower classes. Like yeah. all their houses are kind of together. And so like it talks about how they have to like avert their eyes and pretend they don't see that this man is sitting in the corner for like months trying to get this one poop out and <laughs> he's he squatting can't. over a dent pan. Yeah. And it's just like Seriously? Oh. Okay. So like that's oh, what we kind of mean when we say like body horror and just like describing things yeah in like a way that you're like okay and the same with like there's two scenes in this book of i would basically just say they're tentacle sex oh yeah it, it was hentai porn <laughs> no what's tentacle sex porn called i don't know hentai is just like the art how about, like... how about we not talk about that there's a name for it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, there's tentacles sex in it. it. And, like, uh, it's Sasuke and this boy, Wayat, which is the boy who finds her menstrual blood. And uh, they go inside the womb, because this beast that they're on is pregnant. And they go inside the womb, and they're hanging out with this baby beast. And while they're hanging out with this baby beast, the baby beast has, like, tentacles. And then those tentacles are, like, going in. Poking and, and prodding. Connecting them. And, yeah. And it, like, goes up their nose and their mouth and other places. It just connects them and then it's, like. They feel each other through the tentacles of yeah. this, this baby beast. Yeah. It was very <laughs> interesting. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. But one of the that things that... Uh, so, like, the two overarching themes that I was able to pick up on, because a lot of this book I was not able to pick up on, but the two things I was able to pick up on were, like, the environmental talks yeah. and, like, the protecting where you live and, like, not just ripping it for everything and, like, taking all of that you can, mm -hmm. but, like, actually, like, not being, like, a parasite. Because, like, these people... They were 100% a parasite. Oh, yeah, they were. They were taking everything they had, the beast had, and then once it died, they would just move on to another beast. Yeah. And they didn't really care about what they did to the beast while they had it. Mm -hmm. And, um... Yeah. 
and then the other thing was like the the social the societal standards because like in this book men are treated like lesser than not a like as like uh kind of like i guess like even back further than now like women yeah, still yeah. aren't treated equal now but like there's the 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 guys and like you can put on those like blinders and pretend mm -hmm. like we're equal now but like this it's like they have to go into they have to enter stores in a different door they have to cover themselves yeah. they can't be the head of a household they can't run things they can't be in any leadership position in the government. Like, they're not allowed to be governors or what were they called? Par it was like parliament almost. Yeah, I don't know. Um, like, they can't have any sort of power or, like, independence or, like, anything of that. Yeah. Like, the, uh, there's a guy, um, Doka? Is yeah. that his name? Uh, he was Seske's, like, gonna be her husband or, like, the first of, like, her group. Family unit. Family unit. Yeah. yeah. That's the word. And he had, like, an honor guard to, like, be sure that his honor was kept intact, which is very, like, it was just very, like, our society flipped on mm -hmm. its head. Yeah. And, like, I don't know. It was interesting to read, like, as someone who, like, experiences that sort of now, like, just, like, seeing that role reverse. It's definitely like, interesting. What, yeah. what did what did you think? Yeah, I I think you're right though. Like, about it just being a full 180, and I think the author was very intentional about that. Mm -hmm. Where like it was, it almost felt like I'm trying to think of a time period. Um, I don't know, maybe Victorian England. Maybe, I don't know where it was just like. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. When it was well, yeah, yeah, no voting, but also, like, the, the thing about him having an honor guard where oh, yeah. they weren't allowed to be alone together. Yeah. Um, and, uh, like, no, you had to have a supervisor and um, all this different stuff. And, like, there was one point when she touches his forehead mm -hmm. and they're like, his honor, no! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all this different stuff. Um, just, like, you know, purity and stuff like that. Um, so it was very, it was very interesting to see. Um, yep. so. Me, I was like, at some points I'd be like, okay, this is a little ridiculous. But then I'd be like, but that's like, it's uh, just like the opposite. Like yeah. if, if this was, <laughs> the roles were reversed, it wouldn't be that strange. We wouldn't feel so strange about it, yep. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of that's gross. But, um, so I, I, I guess I appreciated that aspect. Yeah. And, um the the especially the environmental aspect like at one point they go into a healthy beast mm -hmm. and it talks about how like all the plants and like the forestry inside their like stomach and stuff is like so lush mm -hmm. and it's not just like this like mush that they stamp on like it's like an actual vibrant like yeah. forest and just like showing like kind of like the all the uh the memes and stuff about look the earth is healing because of like nobody's out yeah and like the dolphins are back in the in venice and, humans are the virus yeah yeah which like i mean we are and like in this <laughs> book they definitely are mm -hmm. yeah so the way giving a little backstory um there were 20 human spaceships yeah. i think mm -hmm. um and they were feeding or like just Taking resources from a herd of 168 or something like that. A couple it was, hundred. It was a lot. It was a couple hundred beasts. Yeah. Um, and then for like the past 700 years. Yeah. They have been living inside the beasts. And Seske's group, uh, their culture, mm -hmm. um, their ship, they averaged like a decade or two. Mm, it was, yeah, it was, like, maybe it was like, 9 to 10, 9 yeah. to 12 years. Yeah, I think that was the goal. That was, that was, like, that was the longest they could keep the beast alive. While, like, they were going, they had people called heart workers, which would go inside the heart and, like, take bad stuff out, calcified 
pieces and tumors and stuff, but also like divert the ichor, the blood, across the different things. And it talks about how like there was a plant in the stomach or something like that that would ooze this gel. And if you spread it across yourself, then you could go out into space. I mean, you'd have to hold your breath, but it was warm enough and it would protect you from the elements so you could magically jump across to another beast, which was very impressive. Yeah. Um, but like those plants didn't exist in Seske's animal because they had diverted the ichor to other locations. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, they, they would just take and take and take um, and uh, basically eat this animal from the inside out until it couldn't survive anymore. Like they stripped chunks of its skin off to use for leather mm -hmm. and uh and it's like it was very tentacly it it sounded like hundreds and thousands of tentacles were sprouting off this thing on the outside and i talked about how like the tentacles like uh, most of them were just dead because this beast had lost so much energy um in just a couple it was just a couple months yeah. um it was a sick beast already um and then they go across to another another ship's beast um and they've been in this beast that society had been in this beast for, like, 390 years because they figured out that, like, they... Seske's society artificially made this beast think it was sick so that it would, so that it would have a fever so that they could be comfortably warm. Yeah. Um, and the, the healthy beast society was freezing in there. <laughs> and Seske comes back to you, she's like, hey, if we want to survive very long in this beast, we need to get this fever out of here. And uh, somebody was like, what? No, I'm not going to be cold. <laughs> Let's kill this thing. Um, yeah. They, they like, <laughs> they wouldn't acknowledge that it was an actual, like, living Sentient creature. creature. They would yep. call it an it. Yep. And while, like, talked about earlier how it was, uh, she was pregnant. And they were actively trying to kill that baby. Which they did. Yeah. yeah. And that, yeah. that was hard to read. Yeah. Because, like, they were just, like, they were killing the baby because the baby was taking the resources from them, even though they were the ones that were taking the resources from the baby. Yeah. And they were running out of animals. And, like, the 20 ships were down to... Seven. A... No, it was seven. It was seven. So it was down to seven. But, but there was also, like, way less than 100 animals left. And yeah. they were, like, all seven, if they averaged 10 years each on a beast, they're going to be out in... You know, they're going to be up, up, up a creek without a paddle pretty soon. Um, so, despite the fact that they need... Uh, that, I found that weird. Like, you need animals to survive longer in space. But they yeah. killed a baby that hadn't been born yet. Yeah. Just so that their beast would survive a little yeah. bit longer. And one thing I didn't get was towards... So, like, this book, I could not follow the plot. Half the time, I didn't... I didn't think there was a plot. They were just kind of like jumping around to different like, oh, this is happening. This is happening. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. And so like at one point, like for like a few chapters, she, Seske is talking about how like they need to find a planet. Like mm -hmm. they need to like quit living off these beasts because they're not going to be able to do that forever. Like they, like this is, the beasts are a like fixing the, like putting a bandaid on it and like ignoring the problem. <laughs> When, like, a planet, they could all, all the people and from all the beasts mm -hmm. could go and find. But, like, at the end, they're just like, nah, we're just gonna keep this beast healthy. Yeah. And, like, I don't... So they decided to live like the other society. Sort of. Yeah. But not, gonna... not even, like, really. Because, like, the other society, they had done so much to keep the beast alive and healthy mm -hmm. that they had sacrificed themselves Basically. like that society did not have any women and it had, it had like a couple yeah and none of the men on the ship had ever seen them yeah um which was very interesting and so um so like it was th so they weren't willing to go that far to like actually protect the beast yeah. they were just trying to extend its life a little bit further which i thought was kind of like why don't you still like even though i'm pretty sure that the island or the world that the beat they had shown they had been shown was by the beast and it was like fake or something oh. or like wasn't actually good yeah but like still like them because like she kept saying Seske kept saying how she didn't want to kill another beast mm -hmm. she never wanted to take another beast's life but like at the end they're still living on this beast and they're like okay 
we're we're good now. We're on this beast, and we're still we're happy and alive. Yeah. And we're doing everything we can to make this beast better. Yeah. But like, eventually that <laughs> beast is gonna go out, mm -hmm. and you're gonna have to kill another one if you're not looking for an, a planet. Yeah. And I didn't understand why they had to get all the other people, like, from all the other mm -hmm. other beasts. Because, like, they don't talk to those people. Yeah. Like, they, they basically become, like, completely different worlds. Not just, like, different cultures that, like, you kind of understand, but you don't understand a lot mm -hmm. of things. But, like, they're just completely different worlds. There was no trade, no anything. Yeah, they were, like, all no. shut off. Mm -hmm. And, um... And so, like, whenever they the other worlds wouldn't work with them, they, it was basically like, okay, I guess we're not going to another world. Yeah, that was just weird. Yeah. yeah. So I get okay. So this is this is the storyline as best as I could get it. <sighs> Sasuke is born first. Her sister is born second, but Matrix doesn't kill the sister. Sisterkin, because she's a second-born daughter that wasn't supposed to exist, doesn't get a name. Her name is Sisterkin. She sucks, and she wants to kill Sasuke and take the throne for herself. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's the entire plot. Sasuke is trying not to get killed by Sisterkin. Sasuke's mother and Matrix's mother uh, and Sisterkin's mother doesn't believe Sasuke. Matrix dies. Mm -hmm. Sasuke, did she kill Sisterkin? Whatever happened to Sisterkin? I don't know. Wasn't resolved. Sasuke gets impregnated by the beast. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... The beast wants to kill itself so that all the humans on it die. Because it's a sentient thing that's being eaten. Alive from the inside. And Sasuke's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. How about instead, I take my the egg that's growing inside of me and impregnate, plant it inside the womb of a healthy beast that no humans are in. Then your baby, even despite the fact that we killed one of your babies, we'll, we'll plant another one of your babies inside another beast and it can grow there. And the beast is like... Chill. Let's do it. And that's what they do. And Sesky's like, reform! Because she's queen now. Sister Ken has disappeared. Yeah. And that's the story. Yeah. And then, like, a, a Dala story. <laughs> oh, a Dala exists, yeah. Yeah. A Dala. So, Sesuke and a Dala, like, love each other, but, like, they can't be together. And so, like. Because a Dala's, like, a super low caste. Yeah. And so, like,. That, but that's, like, the, the part one. And then, for the rest of it, they're not together. They yeah. don't even, like, interact with each other. Part two, they never and, see each other. And and so Adala becomes a heart worker, so she works in the heart. And, like, the, 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 the way that I could see, like, how big the beast was is, like, they were able to walk, like, fully upright in, the, in like, the veins of this creature. Like, they were able to just, like, walk in, hang out, and then, like, whenever the heartbeat would come, which was, like, every three minutes and something seconds. 47 and a half seconds. Yep. Uh, they would, like, have to hold on to the side of the, the vein so they wouldn't get, like, washed away. And so, um, she becomes a heart worker, and then she sees that there's someone who looks like her, so she finds out it's her sister, but it's not really her sister because it was just her parents donated an egg and a sperm. And they're, that's how they get the beast up and running so fast. Like, to where it's like a new thing is they quickly grow these people mm -hmm. in, like, test tubes. And then they have them when they're, like, as, when they're old enough to, like, start doing things. They have them running around and, like helping and building this and then like after they're done they throw them a party and then just kill them all all of them <laughs> thousands of people that were building this ship yeah this beast yeah yeah they kill them all and Sasuke was like well that was super screwed up that's like that's not okay um and Dala's like yeah I agree with you um and then like in the next scene Sasuke is selling a 100 female embryos of these people that were used as the workers to the ship that don't have any women. Yeah. And then Adala's like, I'm not okay with that. And Siski's like, if you're not okay with it, okay, then fine. And then they take them back. And yeah. it was just, there were, there were so many 
there were so many parts that were resolved halfway. Yeah. You know, like a big, like something, like thousands of people murdered because we don't have the resources. And like, like, oh, that's not okay. And then it's just never mentioned again. And um, Sister Kim just stopped. Like she, she attempted murder a couple times on Sesuke, which I mean, thousands of people were also killed. That was, that they were murdered also. But you know what I mean? Like the main character, the queen, attempted killing against the queen and she, no punishment. Yeah. Um, well, like Adala ends up becoming like a bone worker. Yeah. Once she finds out about like her sister. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then, like, so she becomes one of them and, like, tries to, like, overthrow the the government. It was a rebellion? But, like, the rebellion, like, happens and I, like, erect this, like, statue and, like, sister is, like, a, a, a cuss word there. Because, yeah. like, you can't have a sister. And, um, so, like, they call themselves, like, the sisters of the Traveling lost people. names or something. Yeah. I don't know. And they, like, blow up one building, and then... Do they? Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, they blow up one building, <laughs> and then, like, they're dismembered. Or yeah. disbanded. And they're like, just like, okay, okay. Like, it just... it This book, like, the whole time, it felt like, okay, this is the direction we're going. Like, oh, Sister Ken is trying to kill a uh, Sesuke. Okay, we're gonna really, like, go into, like, the overthrowing the government, and, like, that type of plot. Okay, makes sense. But then, like, it doesn't go anywhere. And then we have the Adala trying to overthrow the government. Okay, we're going to go in that direction, but then it doesn't go anywhere. And then we're going into the, we're going to find, we're going to bring everyone, stop killing all these beasts, and, like, find a new world. And so we're like, okay, we're going to go in that <laughs> direction. But, like, then it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Like, it felt like all these things were being, like, <laughs> set up for, like, okay, this this is when we're actually getting into the story. This is when, like, the wheels are going to get going and moving up. But then it just, like, it would go to something else. And then, so it just, like, kept, like, hopping ship. And, like, the thing, the trail would just kind of fizzle out. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that. You're right, though. It just, it changes plot over and over and over again. And it wasn't... There wasn't a main plot. Like, everything felt like a secondary plot. Oh, yeah. It you was know? just, like, five different B-plots mm -hmm. just in this book. And it the, I think that's one of the reasons I was so thrown off by this book. Because it just kept, like, expanding on this world. But it felt like nothing, like, major was happening. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, yeah. Like, Sesuke almost being killed a couple times like that's pretty major a bunch of people dying because like they're not considered people is major and then like them killing this beast and like all these things are major but like how they were uh <clears throat> gone about yeah in this book it didn't it felt like they were like secondary plots and so like it just never felt like we were there yet yeah but then the book ended <laughs> And so we just had, like, this, like, major world, this, like, huge, like, expanse of, like, by the end of it, I sort of, I could understand the, the yeah. world. Like, I could, like, okay, does it make sense to me? No. But, like, I can kind of tell someone, this is how their world works. Mm -hmm. But, like, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to just tell you, like, okay, this is what's happening in this book. Because, like... 20 things happened. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree with you completely. And I think, like, it really jumped the shark. When I finally... I was I was enjoying it because like, by the third act, a little bit into the third act, I finally understood the world. You know, I was complaining about how it was never explained and it was so weird that you can't just understand it. Mm -hmm. um, so I finally figured it out. I knew what was going on and stuff. Um, and then the beast impregnates her. I was like, okay, that's jumping the shark. Mm -hmm. Like, she's she doesn't know she's impregnated, and I'm assuming it happened during the tentacle sex scene when she was in the womb. Yeah. Um, and like, so she's making out with a dollar inside of a flesh pocket, right? It was yeah. like a little flesh closet. <laughs> they were hiding in there, making out for the first time. Yeah. And a doll was like, "Yo, your stomach is sort of big." Yo, why 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 are you so wet? 
and Sasuke was like, uh, I think that's supposed to happen, you know? Um, and she was like, no, no, this is a lot of wet. Um, and they get into the light, and she's like, oh, I'm pregnant. There's tentacles There's coming tentacles out of me. There's tentacles coming out of me. And I was like, oh my goodness, what's happening? That was, that's a jumping the shark moment. Yeah. <laughs> so they <laughs> cover themselves in slime, jump to a healthy beast. She gives birth, sticks it in the womb of this new beast, and then come back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then that's it. That was it. <laughs> like, nothing, nothing more about, like, her, like, talking about, like, I was just impregnated by this yeah, beast. Yeah, it just like, happens. It was just like, okay, that's it. Move on to the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, okay. Oh, man. Like, whenever, whenever that happened, we literally, like, paused the book <laughs> and just, like, stared at each other in, like, horror. Like, what is going... Like, oh. we were like, did that really just happen? <laughs> like, this, this whole book, I just, like... We try not to, like, talk to each other beforehand. Yeah. But, like, this book was utterly impossible. Mm -hmm. Because, like, we literally had to be like, what's going on? And, like, if the other person knew, try to explain what is going on. And then, (laughs) and we, like, at one point had, like, an argument about what was going on. Because I thought you were talking about us. Um, a tentacle sex scene that had happened like closer to the beginning of the yeah, book. There's two. We were actually talking about the the further tentacle sex scene that I had forgotten about, and so like it was just like it was just all muddled together, and like just every every few minutes I was like I don't know what's going on, mm. I don't mm. know what's going on, but like it was still like it wasn't one of those books where like I don't know what's going on, so I hate it. Like, whenever you first, you had me read that Brent Weeks book. Oh. The very first Brent Weeks book. Uh, that's his favorite series, so, I mean, I wanted to try. But, like, that whole first book, like, I had no clue what was going on. Every, like, five minutes, you were having to pause it to explain, like, okay, <laughs> this is what happened. And, um, and, like, I wasn't enjoying that. But, like, this one, I was enjoying it just because of, like, all of the absurd things that were happening. Like, I was like, is this really happening? Like, mm-hmm. is this, like, what's actually going on? Or did I hear that wrong? And so, like, even though I had no clue what was going on, like, I still kind of enjoyed it because I was able to laugh at it. Yeah. And, like, I, I don't know if it was taking itself too seriously like, I'm, I'm trying to decide if, like, Nikki Drayden, like, was 100% serious when she wrote some of these things. Or, like, she wrote so many scenes about poop and about buttholes because they were actually funny. You know? Like, was she, like, actually just, like, writing this, like, fully straight-faced? Or was she laughing? Like, did she, like, kind of know that this was... Like, did she want this to be taken seriously? Like, 100% like straight faced serious or not. You know? I think she did. I think that, like, with the point she was making, you know, the the blatant oh, well, sex I'm, swapping I'm, of like. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about like. The because, body discussions? Yeah, because of how many times she yeah. brought up pooping in this book. And Stinkers. how many times she brought up buttholes in this book. Like, was she like, was that her way of just like having fun with the story or is that like her like just like writing this book straight faced like not at like am I just too much of a 12 year old boy <laughs> because like every time I would read those I would laugh because it's funny yeah you know I don't know I, I honestly couldn't tell you I think it's a toss up 50 50 chance that she was honest or that she was serious about it okay here's another complaint in in sci-fi books, especially about like deep space travel and living, mm-hmm. one of the major things that needs to happen is oxygen and food. Mm-hmm. Can't survive without oxygen. Most you know most ships are portrayed with like a uh, in the centrifuge, which is the spinning center. Uh, there is like greenhouse like plants everywhere. Mm-hmm. That's where they get their oxygen um, and also uh, their food. Right, and then they recycle everything and eat eat their poop twice. Um, 
And then, like, they also get oxygen and water from, like, asteroids, from the ice on asteroids. In this book, that was never mentioned. There was mm -hmm. no issue with, there was no issue with air, ever. Like, mm -hmm. where, where did, no idea how we got it, no idea why the beast generated it. There was also no issue with gravity. Even yeah. though when they went to the other ship, they had less gravity yeah. there. Never explained how they made their beast generate gravity. Um, and then, like, there were times when they were on the outside of the beast. Like, when they came back from Seske giving birth to alien tentacle baby in another beast, they came back, and they don't have a hole to get inside the beast. So they cut it open and mm -hmm. crawl inside the hole, and I was like, oh, well, she cut at a slight angle so that the pressure, like, the pressure inside the beast wouldn't escape. It's like, that's not how that works. There's still a hole into the outside of space. Um... There's also the part where, why is there so much empty space, right? There's no empty space in our bodies. Oh, yeah. There's no, like, even when your stomach is empty, it's still, it's collapsed. It's not just like a bubble. You can't walk around in there if you were tiny enough. There's enough space for thousands and thousands of people to walk around and yeah. stand up. And, even, like, in the heart, mm -hmm. there's only blood in there during the heartbeat itself. There's never blood. Yeah, they there. can just, like, yeah. stand in there and walk around. Like, everywhere. There's, there's... There was never a scene where they had to slosh through or swim through an organ that was full of something. Everything was empty. And, like, with a beast this size, with thousands and thousands of people living inside it, how is your knife thick enough to cut through its skin in one slice? Mm -hmm. Makes no sense. And, like, I don't know, it was just... There was a lot of parts where she was just like, I don't want to figure it out, so I'm just going to ignore it, and it's fine. Um, like, I understand where they get their food, Look, eating the beast. Yeah. Where'd you get your oxygen, lady? <laughs> Where'd you get it? How, how is the beast generating oxygen? Why yeah. are there empty spaces? Makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think, <sighs> I think part of it was just, like, wanting to have <clears throat> something that's... I mean, and it may just be, like, you know? I wanted them to live in a beast. That's weird. Like, it yeah. may just be, like, that simple of an answer, which, like... I can get behind that. You, you want your book to be weird? That That's definitely a way to make your book weird. And I stand by that. Like, I, I applaud that. Because, uh, like, there doesn't have to be, like, this in-depth reason of, like, why. Like, if you just didn't think about the oxygen, like, you didn't want to have to explain that and think about that, then, okay, cool. Yeah. But, like, if you did think about it and, like, it just wasn't, like, portrayed across like it wasn't able for us to pick it up and then that's when like you have like an okay then you like missed something with like explaining stuff and that part was missed but like because like I feel like the same with like the books are like artwork like sometimes they can have meaning and different people will gather different things from the artwork mm -hmm. and um like, from this book, I gathered a lot about environmental efforts and stuff. But someone else may really focus on the, um, the, I don't know. Gender like, roles. Yeah, the gender roles or the monarchy or something else. And, and so, like, I don't know where I'm going with this. Yeah. But, like, just, like, just because it doesn't make, and, like, there doesn't, Oh, I remember what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, and there doesn't have to be, like, this in-depth, like, detailed reason about, like, why things happen, you know? Like, in in school, whenever they would be, like, uh, I remember whenever we would, we read The Great Gatsby in high school, mm -hmm. uh, talking about the clock, the broken clock. Why did he write that it was broken? And, like, having to, like, explain why this clock is broken because time is standing still um Gatsby's living in the past and his time hasn't moved <laughs> forward and like all these things but like really it could just be it's just a broken clock yeah and like this could literally just be it's just a beast you know mm -hmm. and so like part of that like I I can I guess that's why I was wondering like how serious this book is like is there as much in-depth meaning as like I mean obviously there's meaning about the environmental stuff and the gender roles and stuff like there's no 
denying that that's what she wanted to like pinpoint and stuff but like the other things I I kind of wonder that's why it makes me wonder like how serious was this yeah type of thing I don't know um anything else like any are there any characters you want to specifically talk about or oh one thing I want to talk about <laughs> Um, the wedding night. Oh! <laughs> oh, man. So, Seske gets married to Doka. Yeah. To start her family unit. And so they have to consummate the marriage. And Seske doesn't want to do that, you know? She doesn't love this guy. She doesn't want to do that with him. So... Her and Wayat um, build a jelly person, like out of jello, pretty much. Like, that's what I gathered. I just imagined I it was could... like a big blubber, like a flubber type of thing. Yeah, but I think it could move. Like, I think it, like. No, it was, it moved whenever she moved it. Yeah? Yeah, it, it didn't move on its own. And because it talked about how, like, it started to have life of its own after he mounted it. <laughs> And so, like, and then, and so they're sitting there with this jello person they made in bed with Doka. While they, Were they in bed with him? I thought they wanted to go another room. No. No, they weren't in bed with him. Oh, the jello yeah. person was in bed yeah, with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they were sitting off the bed, like, at the edge of the bed, like, on the floor. And then they were, like, getting close and, like, starting to kiss while this... Oh, for, her husband yeah. was in bed with a jelly version. He of was her. blasted out of his mind though. He was drunk. I like he wasn't he wasn't sober. Yeah. Yeah. Just just to explain why he didn't notice. <laughs> um but yeah, they were were they sitting right next to the bed? I thought they were like in out, outside the room. No, because like they fell asleep and they were naked. They were naked for some reason. Maybe they were moving towards it. I d I don't know. But like even that thing, like at whenever Doka woke up yeah. That was another thing that, like, happened, and then, like, they didn't do anything after it. Because, like, when he woke up, he was, he was like, embarrassed and angry that they had tricked him yeah. with this. And also that his new wife was laying on the floor naked mm -hmm. with this other guy. And so, and so like, he's like, I'm, I'm getting this marriage annulled. Like, you don't deserve the throne, yada, yada, yada. And then, like, two seconds later... He's, like, completely cool with them. Still married. And still married. Yeah. And still helping Seske out with whatever plan yeah. she's going with. That was the worst thought-out plan ever, though. Like, okay, so if you don't want to have sex with a dude, and you make Slime Lady. <laughs> Drunk Doka has sex with Slime Lady. You almost have sex with Cute Boy. Next to Drunk Doka. At what point did you decide to... Not get rid of Slime Lady, and not get rid of Cute Boy. Well, they fell asleep. I... In the same room. And fell, and slept through Doka waking up and seeing Slime Lady and Naked Boy with his wife. She's like, why though? I <laughs> Terrible think... planning. Yeah. On I, Seske's part. I think that was... Again, that's why, like, I wonder if this book was really taken seriously. Because, like, <laughs> if if that was me, um, because, like, one, you should never have to do that if you don't want to. So, yeah, like, definitely. But, like, if you felt the pressure of doing that, like, just get him really drunk. And then when he passes out, he passes out. And then in the morning, you can be like, yeah, don't you remember? It was great. Like, yeah, like, that's, that's all you have to do. <laughs> like, you don't have to devise this whole plan. Because if he's so drunk, he's not going to remember anything. Yeah. Or you can, if he thinks he remembers, you can be like, nope, that's just your, your fogged brain thinking that. This is what actually happened. That was weird. Just a weird scene. It was, this, this book was just weird scene after weird scene mm -hmm. like it was just like oh okay okay <laughs> but like mm. yeah 
I may not fully understand this book, but I still respect it. You know? Yeah. Like, I still, like, I can't hate this book. When, like, it doesn't actually make sense because, like, you know, if I didn't understand anything that happened in this book, like, why would I enjoy it? I don't know. It just, it has some type of charm. I can't pinpoint it. But it has some sort of charm that, like, I'm like, maybe it's just the pretty cover. Maybe the cover is so beautiful that I'm just like, you know what? This book. Fuck. Also, if that's what they look like. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Mm. That's really cool. So the uh, the cover illustration was by Courtney Howlett. H-O-W-L-E-T-T. -T. If y'all want to check her out. I'm going to see if I can follow her on Instagram or something. Because that's awesome. Yeah. You ready to close this baby out? Yeah. As long as you have nothing else to say on this book. Oh, not on this book. Um, I would like to cap off my cool uh, piece of knowledge from last time. So last time, I made the statement that squirrels can survive uh, terminal velocity. Which means they can't, if you drop them from space or, you know, within gravity, they will survive landing on the ground. Right? Mm -hmm. The only way to kill a squirrel through falling is through starvation, that they fall so long that they don't have time to eat while they're, like, they, they can't go find food because they're falling, right? Mm -hmm. That is 4,800 miles. So it takes them, that 4,800 miles is so long of a time that they would die from starvation before they hit the ground. That is the only way a squirrel can die from falling. How high up is that? Way high up. Is that like yeah. above? Outside, outside the atmosphere. Yeah. It is? Oh yeah, yeah, the atmosphere. I mean, I don't even want to say. It's a cup. It's not, it's not as far as we think. Mm. This was fun. I enjoyed the book. Like it was, it was a good story. And like I said earlier, if it was, if it was in a different setting, like if this was written as a fantasy novel on an Earth-like planet, mm -hmm. I'd be cool beans. Like the the story arc of it, you know, uh, sister trying to kill you so she can take your spot. And like even like the society, I could have gotten past. But it was just so weird. Like everything else, was just so weird. I wasn't like, any fantasy I've ever read before. So yeah, it was like the storyline itself was good. Yeah, I thought the overarching plot points, those were nice. Mm. I thought. Well. Okay. Well, the mm. next book we're reading will be on August fifth, and that will be Upright Women Wanted. Oh yeah. By Sarah Gailey. And then the next August book will be on August 19th. That is The Deep by River Solomon. I'm excited for both of those books. What's The Deep about? The Deep is, um, it's about mermaids. Okay, But cool. they are uh, descendants from uh, African women who were brought over on slave ships. Interesting. But they were pushed overboard. Like, they were pregnant and, like, pushed overboard. So wow. they're, like, the children... Of those... Oh, the pregnant women. African women. Had mermaid babies. Yeah. Interesting. I'm excited for both of those. But yeah. So I guess that's it. Yeah? Yeah, that's You're all. good? I think so. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. And read this book so we can talk about it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> pick it up. Uh, yeah. Because... <laughs> We, I'm sure we haven't, we don't remember everything, or like... Oh yeah, there's... Like other people see things that we just didn't register. Yeah, there's so much in this book that I'm positive we missed things. Yeah. But, um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please give it a like, uh, comment, and subscribe. Definitely help us out and show that you actually enjoy this stuff i mean even if no one enjoys this stuff <laughs> i'm still gonna do it with you because i I, I enjoy like actually reading books with you yeah i think it's yeah. a lot of fun yeah. because it's different than us like talking about the books that we enjoy and like oh i read this book like by myself like i'm gonna tell yeah. you about it like it's different because we both experienced it mm -hmm. and i don't know it's just fun i agree but yeah thank you so much for watching and i will see you in on the 5th of August with Upright Women Wanted. Yep. Bye. See y'all on the flippity flop. <laughs>